Hello friends, it's your buddy Keith and I am here live again in the control room at the one and only world famous Essex Recording Studios just outside South End on Sea in England, baby. All right, I've got a USA Jackson to share with y'all today. If you're new to the channel, smash that like button, click subscribe, come join nearly 10,000 friends that you didn't even know you had. We all hang out here, we look at cool guitars I get from all around the world, we see them up close as if you were holding them in your very own hands, and uh, you can even buy them. You can buy every single one of them on our website, EssexRecordingStudios.com, or on Reverb.com. If you're American, definitely make sure you buy off of our website, because you won't have to pay that weird American online sales tax. Cool. So back to the guitar. This is a Jackson SL1. It's a USA American-made soloist. And the SL1 is distinguished by three pickups. HSS pattern, humbucker, single coil, single, single coil. The SL2, and then later I think called SL2H, is the two humbucker version. If I'm not mistaken, for a brief moment in time, there was an American USA model called the SL2, and then it turned into SL2H, and the SL2 became the Japanese import model, and then later Indonesian import model. Yes. All right, this is artist-owned, and it comes with the epic Jackson molded SKB flight case. These flight cases are epic. Seriously beefy rubberized grips. You've got uh, TSA, which is the Transportation Security Administration. TSA locks with the proper key, so you don't have security at the airport busting open your case and breaking it. Very helpful stuff. This guitar came to us from my buddy Colin. Colin is the main man in Ghosts of Atlantis. He formed Devilment, and he's in a few other exciting projects that are coming up. Yes, serious artist. He's a monster of a man. He's like six and a half feet tall and uh, endorsed by Jackson. He, he plays uh, USA Randy Rhodes. He's got a custom shop monstrosity coming in, and this came to us from him. The guitar is, I mean, it's your classic black metal soloist. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of a metallic pearl black. There you go. I think if this was an Ibanez, it would be called a galaxy black. I can't remember for the life of me what this color is with Jackson. If I had to guess, I don't think they do cool, funky names like uh, galaxy black back, back at this time. I think it would just be like metallic black or pearl black. Speaking of back in this time, the serial number is, ye, uh, let's see here, U, which means it's made in the Ontario USA factory, 10704. Now, if you go to the Jackson website, around 2001, they stop tracking serial numbers, which is annoying because it's only been like 20 years since then, hasn't it? But based on the last tracking of serial numbers and how many USA models they were making per year, I'd say it's a pretty safe bet this is a 2003. Cool. You've got three Seymour, hum, hum, uh, three Seymour Duncan humbuckers, not humbuckers, pickups. One humbucker, two single coils. You've got an original German Floyd Rose. Yes. And ebony fretboard. And check this out. I'm under this super bright light right here. Um, but let's just adjust it properly. Look at these mother of pearl inlays and how they pop. And also the mother of pearl Jackson logo. And if we get, if we get the light right, you can really see some crazy kind of rainbow colors pop out in this. And it gets all bedazzled. It's a bit hard to see and make out under this. Oh, I think I just got it maybe, maybe there. Let's have a look. There you go. You can just kind of see it there. It's really hard under a spotlight. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, what, what else is cool is in the 90s, sometimes with the Mother of Pearl logos, you would get this weird delamination effect kind of underneath the Jackson name, and sometimes it would even like wipe out the whole Made in the USA thing. Not the case. This is a perfectly intact Mother of Pearl Jackson logo. Very, very nice. Yes. Uh, the shark fin inlays on the neck. Really pop, really stand out, look gorgeous. 
Colin pointed that out to me. And what else can we talk about? You got one volume knob, you got one tone knob, five-way selector switch, and, oh, do I have this unscrewed all the way? Yes, I do. You've got your two little uh, Allen keys to make all of your little adjustments if needed. This little guy, where's this little guy go? I think he goes down here. Yep, 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 yep. So you got all your little tools there. What else can we say? Uh, neck through construction, as you can see. And if we turn it around, we've got the nice modern neck heel with easy access. If you look at the 80s, they call San Dimas soloist. You don't have this nice contour lines. You've got like a giant, thump, huge, huge, chunky neck heel. Um, you've also got historically two different size electronic cavity covers. So I think the early 80s had a, uh, a much smaller one, like maybe this size, kind of a kidney shape. And this is what they call the Ontario uh, cavity cover. Jackson label tuners. Now, as you can see on the back here, lots of little, lots of little dings and, and nicks in the paint. It looks like someone more than likely, uh, not Colin, I know he got it this way, but uh, it looks like someone probably was wearing something like studded or riveted, kind of like a Zach Wild um, guitar strap, you know, with all the rivets and stuff on it, or like Judas Priest style, because the the dings are all somewhat like uniform and consistent in size, and they're all kind of peppered and distributed throughout the back here. Um, I think there's one little guy on the neck there lots of light uh scratches like on the the logos and stuff here so it's pretty clear that someone some whatever someone was wearing was making little impact marks all all throughout the back there's uh you can see it kind of right right there it's been filled in beautiful thing about a black guitar is that uh this little guy right here does wonders your little uh, cheat codes for making everything look nice and presentable for the audience. And the top, the front, obviously looks killer, looks amazing. I mean, this is your audience facing part and it looks fantastic as you can see. There's a little uh, bit at the edge here. And again, had the Sharpie treatment, but with the black guitar on stage, it, you know, unless you've got some sort of crazy uh, uh, scratch. It's um, pretty hard for anything to show up in photographs, video, all that good stuff. Good looking guitar. Uh, also as well, beautiful thing about black is so easy to refinish. Yes, or just to paint over. If you wanna do custom artwork, this is a great candidate. You could take this and just do a blood spat, uh, splatter effect. That would look sick. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. It's going to be your guitar. If you just want to use it, abuse it, and make it your tour beast, your workhorse, that's cool too. Again, very presentable looking guitar on stage facing the audience. The logo stands out clear. The inlays stand out clear. Stunning. You got 24 frets, and I love this with uh, with Jackson. They do, the, they call it Ivoroid. It's like faux ivory. It's not real bone because you're not allowed to trade in real bone. But it has that texture of real ivory. If you ever look at like a old piano keys from like the 1920s and stuff. They're all made out of real bone, real ivory. And so it has that effect. And not many, in fact I can't think of any other manufacturers that use that attention to detail. Very cool. Um, What else can we say? Yeah. The SL1 these days is not that common, and it's an easy case to argue that it's superior to the SL2H because, you know, if for this type of machine, you, you're rarely on the neck pickup with a humbucker, you know, with the 2H. You're going to be in the lead position. This is a lead guitar. That's why it's called the soloist. So what's nice about having these two Seymour Duncan singles is if you want different tones you're not going to get dramatically different tone 
with another Seymour Duncan plopped right there. But if you wanted to rip these out, three is better than two. I mean, that's just a fact. Nobody, uh, nobody dreams about having twosomes, do they? Yeah. So, you got three pickups. You get way more tonal versatility out of this. More options. Uh, if you were Bob Ross painting little trees, you get to paint more different colors of more different types of trees with your three pickups. Cool. You have a bigger color palette for sound. That's wonderful. Um, and, you know, with these days, back when they made this 03, the whole boutique pickup thing wasn't, you know, we're almost talking about 20 years ago. Was it 18 years ago? That wasn't really so much of a thing back then. But now there's so many brilliant companies. I mean, here in the UK, over in Cornwall, we've got Bare Knuckle. I remember those guys when they were first starting out. Now they're like factory OEM suppliers to a lot of brands, which is including Jackson on some models, which is crazy. Really, really cool, guys. So, yes. Uh, you know, if, if you want something that looks awesome, looks metal, looks aggressive, um, or just looks stunning on stage, I mean, the Mother of Pearl pops, all blacked out, all murdered out, got black hardware, black pickups, ebony, black fretboard, black matching headstock, it's, um, yeah, it's, it matches anything, it's like the little black dress of, of metal. There you go. Uh, and by all means, if you're not a Seymour Duncan fan, like I like Seymour Duncans. I, I prefer Demarzias. I just like how they cut through the mix, the clarity and, and how punchy they are, you know, or EMGs or whatever. You have loads and loads and loads of different options. Nowadays, when you get pickup kits, they can come with uh, uh, pots that push pull for uh, splitting, coil splitting, or boosts, whatever. You have a five-way selector switch. So you're going to get a lot of options out of this. And you can make it really any way you want. Cool. I'm going to get going. I'm going to skedaddle because a little sneak peek for you. I've got hiding over here a brand new. And when I say brand new, I mean this was... I found this in a guitar shop in Italy who had never sold this. It's been sitting in their shop for over 20 years. This is a new old stock USA Jackson Scott Ian JJ1 Karina body. Absolutely insane. That video is coming up not next. No cheating. You have to uh, click and watch that. But yes, if you want to make this SL1 yours, these are impossible to find. Generally, now, with all of the pandemic supply shortage demand has far out surpassed supply um i mean collins endorsed and they told him two years before he can get his custom shop andy sneeps playing with judas priest uh he got my randy Rhodes because again jackson told him yeah man nice band we've heard of you we've heard of judas priest but literally nothing we can do for you at all to get you a randy Rhodes on tour so you know, he's touring America right now with my, my Randy Rhodes that uh, uh, he took off my hands. So it is very, very difficult to even find USA Jacksons. If, I mean, I, if I go to any of my guitar shops here in the UK, anyone's near me, there's zero USA Jacksons. There's almost zero Jacksons. They're just, they're just gone. There's like no guitars in the guitar shops. Um, so yeah. That's that's it, guys. That's the SL1. We had one in Cobalt Blue before. That one was quite cool. And if you want to check out that video, it was owned by a band called Leather Wolf. Uh, had that a few years back just to see another SL1. But this is your quintessential Jackson USA soloist guitar. And this is when people think of a Jackson, generally you, two models come to mind. The Randy Rhodes and the soloist. This is the original, like, super strat. Neck through, Floyd Rose, you know, strat on steroids, baby. Cool. And if you're a real big Jackson fan, you can go back and look at my video of Jackson number one that I took in Switzerland, as well as the most insane Jackson collection I've ever seen. He owns the first Jackson ever made, like, first Kelly ever made, first Jackson Telecaster. I think Billy Idol's old guitarist's uh, Jackson. I mean, crazy. The first ever pointy headstock, first Charvel. He has the original drawing for the Jackson logo. Yes. 
Serious, serious stuff, guys. Check that. Check out those videos on the channel. If you want to buy this, EssexRecordingStudios.com. Go there. It's in the shop. It's all powered by Shopify. You check it out, and I ship it out to you anywhere in the world. Priority. If you want to chat with me, hit us up on the socials. It's at Essex Recording Studios, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Again, one last little uh, condition. Just going across the whole thing. You can see, I mean, on a black guitar, see how under the spotlight all those little marks stood out? But see how here it all looks super, super straight? That is the beauty of a black guitar, guys. Wow. All right. Cool. Little little tiny chip on the, the headstock that... Uh, nothing chipped off, but just a paint chip that I filled in with the marker. Um, there you go. You can kind of see it there. Not a big deal. And then, of course, if you put it underneath the spotlight of death, you can see it, you know, at its worst. All my little fingerprints in case you want to frame me for a bank robbery. Cool, dudes. I will catch you all later. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, stay tuned for another USA Jackson.